Let's see here. Can you see my mm -hmm. screen? Okay, and so then if I just click on, you guys can see all that, okay? Okay. okay. So, hello everyone. Today we are having Gina Smith from the Kelly Center. Um, she will be talking to us about stress and test anxiety management. And we are really excited to have her um, here speaking to us and informing us a little bit of, of management of stress and test anxiety management. Um, so yeah, go ahead whenever you're ready. All right. Well, thank you. I'm excited to join you guys this evening and hopefully there's some things that I share with you that will be beneficial to you. After I, or I was searching for the Zoom link and um, to, to find out uh, what I need to do to sign on, and I noticed in the email that was originally requested, it was to talk about stress and um, test anxiety management. And so uh, these PowerPoint slides are about time management, but I will talk some about test anxiety management too. So, so hopefully this will um, be beneficial to you guys and hopefully it's kind of what you had in mind. So, so to start out with, um, again, my name is Gina Smith and I'm the director of the Kelly Center. I've been here at Fort Hayes since 2000. Um, prior to being the director of the Kelly Center, I taught in the psychology department um, for about 14 years. And uh, so I've been at Fort Hayes for quite a long time. And uh, I really enjoy the opportunity to teach um, students here at Fort Hayes. I also really enjoy my role as the director of the Kelly Center. I get a chance to work with students in counseling services. Uh, I get to supervise people as they're working on their degrees here at Fort Hayes in social work, counseling, and psychology if they decide to do their practicums and internships with the Kelly Center. And so uh, one of the things too I really enjoy are um, opportunities like this to do outreach where I can talk to you a little bit about what we do as far as trying to educate students on ways to manage things like stress and so hopefully there's some uh, items and, and topic areas here that will be of interest to you so just to start out with I think this is always kind of an interesting uh, picture to look at um, and that big question are you stressed I think that um, since COVID um, affected us all um, in March and there was the shutdown here at Fort Hayes, I know um, for myself, I really hoped um, when we left here in March, I really hoped that we wouldn't still be dealing with COVID uh, this far out. And unfortunately, um, we're still needing to deal with that. And I know it's caused extra stress for lots of students. Um, one of the things that we did in March was we moved our counseling services to all Zoom sessions. And so we rarely saw anybody from March until about August in person. Instead, we did our sessions um, online through Zoom. And so many of the students I talked to just really talked to me about their stress level. And many of them talked about how they were wanted to take their classes on campus. That's what they had enrolled in. And switching over to online classes was pretty it's pretty challenging for people. So, um, <clears throat> so certainly I know that COVID has added stress um, to what typically is stressful when you're getting into your major classes and, and things of that nature. So, so the other thing that happens sometimes with stress is also just a feeling of burnout. And that's something also I'm hearing from students and I don't know if any of you are experiencing that, but I think what's happened with just being in your homes and in your residence halls or at your home doing classes. And if your day is spent doing a lot of Zoom um, or just working on your own um, with online classes, <clears throat> I think a lot of students are feeling a little bit frustrated with just kind of, kind of missing a lot of the social interaction and kind of some of the spontaneous conversation that happens in class or after class or before class. Um, I think one of the things that I have missed about, about um, kind of the typical format of, of on-campus classes is just watching students, you know, walking around talking to each other or meeting each other for lunch and getting Starbucks together. And so I think, I think some of the social aspects have been cut out has left a lot of people feeling kind of burnout 
like it's the same thing over and over again and people are feeling some frustration with that. So again, just a few kind of lighthearted uh, um, slides here. Um, so again, feel like you're losing it. Again, just that overwhelming feeling with stress. So some of this might be a review um, that some of you guys have heard before, but I think it's kind of helpful to just think about what are some typical signs of stress that you may be experiencing? I've seen stress affect students in a number of different ways. Sometimes it could be physical, where I've had people come in and say that they just don't feel good. They talk about being really tired and um, talk about like headaches, some sort of a physical ailment. Maybe their stomach is bothering them, maybe neck aches, back aches, um, just an overall fatigue happening. Um, some, sometimes emotionally or um, emotionally or mentally, some of the challenges can be like difficulty concentrating. Uh, through COVID in particular, um, the students I've seen in counseling um, from March until now, I still um, am seeing some students in person, some um, uh, via Zoom. I still hear people talk about, I'm having a hard time just concentrating. I might read the same page over and over again, and I'm having a hard time just um, concentrating on material or uh, just struggling with staying motivated. So, I think even students who typically get all A's um, and are highly motivated students, I think have really struggled during this time period. So I know you, uh, the students here uh, that are uh, signed in tonight, I know you guys are involved in an honor society. So obviously you do well academically. And so maybe some of you even are struggling with motivation and just trying to keep yourself focused. So, um, so you can see, again, concentration problems, um, increased errors, um, and then just challenges with, with making decisions. Sometimes with stress, you can feel like it's just hard for you to decide just what you wanna do, or if you wanna change your major, or just other life decisions. Sometimes it just makes things a little bit more challenging. So people often describe some of these ways that they're affected by stress. So I'd like you guys to think about a little bit about what stresses you out. And uh, for some people, it's a lot of change. And again, that's a theme I've heard a lot from students is maybe they get to class and find out, okay, we're not gonna meet on campus now, we're just only meeting online, or I need to Zoom on Monday, but go to class on Wednesday and just really struggling with like trying to keep up with things. Or you might find out that one of your friends is struggling with something. And so I, I kind of like this slide in that uh, here at the bottom, there cannot be a stressful crisis next week because my schedule is already too full. So um, I kind of like that one that we're, we're thinking that our, we reached our max with stress, can't really handle one more thing. So, um, so certainly I think we've all felt maybe some financial stress, um, personal stress, worries about not wanting to get COVID or um, you know, as a young adult, not wanting to get it because if you want to go home and see your families, I know that can be a challenge. Um, I also know it's, it's really sad and frustrating. Um, many of the freshmen that I, I have talked to that are in freshman seminar or, or some of the students that come see me in counseling, they're coming off of a lot of disappointment from their senior year, maybe not getting to have graduation or prom or maybe their spring baseball season or softball season or whatever track. And so they're, they're really frustrated and they came to Fort Hayes looking forward to a college experience that's very different than what they anticipated. So I know there's just a lot of different things that are very different and stressful. And so many times people just feel like their stress level just keeps piling up and piling up. And so that's why I think it's important to understand things about stress. It's, under, it's important to understand about how you're affected by it and hopefully um, now knowing some things about the Kelly Center and resources that some of you guys might reach out to us if you feel like um, you're struggling. So this slide just gets you thinking about your roles in life. I know when I was in your shoes and I went to college, I remember I just didn't attend college. Um, I remember that I had a almost a full-time job because I needed to support myself. My parents helped me out in college, but um, you know they helped me the best that they could with expenses and gave me some grocery money or helped me with different things. But there's a lot of stuff I needed to take care of myself. And so 
I remember I tried to, I was taking classes, I was working, I volunteered, I had friends that I was trying to be a friend to, I uh, was in a dating relationship, um, I had roommates. So there's lots of different relationships that uh, I was involved in. I had uh, different roles like serving in organizations and, and again, attending class and working. And so many times you're just juggling a lot of different things. Um, it's not just school. So sometimes we feel like it's kind of challenging just to manage all the different roles and expectations at any given time. So I think this visual is kind of good that you're just trying to keep up with so many different things and manage all kinds of things in your life. And so sometimes you can just feel pretty overwhelmed um, with all the different challenges. T today, you guys might have some stressors on your mind and maybe they're pretty heavy and you feel like they're pretty challenging. And I thought this slide's kind of interesting to think about how stress affects you. Um, just thinking about something that worried you about a year ago. If you want to test your memory, try to recall what you were worrying about one year ago today. So I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that. Maybe you can even think of what it was, but, but many times in our life when something seems really challenging and we think, oh my gosh, I'll never get through this. Maybe looking back on it a year, maybe it was tough for a few months, but you got through it. And um, so many times if you're in a crisis right now and you think, oh my gosh, things are never gonna get better. If you think back, maybe there's some different challenges you've had at different times in your life and you did find a way to get through it. Sometimes even a good night's sleep makes a difference. Um, again, over the years of doing counseling, I have worked with people who have breakups in relationships, or they go some, through some different stressors with their family or roommates or friends, and it can be really hard at that time. And it's very real and it's very challenging. But many times if you try to face some of those stressors, work on ways to cope with them. Many times you find a way to get through those things and you're stronger as you get through some of those different experiences. A lot of times there's a lot of good life lessons that you go through at times that you feel like you grow and you find strength you didn't even know that you had. And so it's kind of an interesting to, thing to think about. Another area I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about today is to think about some myths associated with stress. And one of those is that all stress is bad. Certainly we need to have a little bit of stress in our life to motivate us. I know any time I have ever taken a test or when I was younger, if I had to give a speech, I got a little bit nervous about that. And I think that nervousness or stress came from my desire to do a good job. And so I felt a little bit of pressure and I wanted to do well. So I felt a little bit of stress. You guys had mentioned maybe wanting to hear a little bit about test anxiety. And so I'll talk about that. But many times people do experience some stress related to an exam. Many times, again, we want to do well on that exam. Maybe we have a scholarship and so we want to keep an A or a B in that class. And so we feel stress. And so you might get your exam and look at it and maybe feel a sense of panic. Like, what if I'm not going to be able to pass this? And so you then you start to breathe heavier and your heart races a little bit. And so, um, so there is some stress associated with performance. But not all stress is bad. We need to get a little bit nervous to, to maybe to perform better. But we don't want to maintain a high level of stress because that can be harmful um, to our bodies. The second one, stress will not hurt you. Again, a little bit of stress is not going to harm someone. But over time, if you have a high level of stress, that can start to, to affect your health. I've worked with people who have a high level of stress, and sometimes that can affect their blood pressure. Sometimes that can affect their sleep, and they start to have trouble sleeping. I've worked with people with stress that will have symptoms like they'll have numbness, or they'll have like a heat sensation in their body, where they feel like they're going to have a heart attack or something like that. I've worked with people that their hair falls out, and they feel like they're gonna be um, go bald by the time their hair stops uh, falling out. And many times that's just stress related. And so if you get yourself calmed down, um, and I tell people if, if there's some of their hairs falling out, many times when your stress level calms down, your hair grows back. But, um, 
but many times that can be something that can happen with stress. So some stress, if it's too much stress, it can affect you. A lot of people feel like if, if I'm stressed out about something, everybody feels stress about this. And I think all of us are, are fairly unique about stressors. For some of us, we don't get real stressed out about school, but something with a relationship might stress us out. And other people um, experience stress with roommates. Some people are more introverted. Some people are more extroverted. We all have different types of things that stress us out. So there's probably a few things that are universal, but all of us experience stress in different ways and handle stress in different ways. So I want to spend a little bit of time too talking to you about ways to relieve stress and some of that will be re related to how you've just taken care of yourself and um, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of the resources we have at the Kelly Center as well as some things hopefully specific to test anxiety if I'm able to figure out how to share screens and um, with these other two topic areas. So, so I'd like you to think about what's your favorite stress reliever. So all of us have something different that we like to do. So I like to go for walks. That's something I really enjoy. I have a 22 year old son and uh, he attends school in Omaha at the University of Nebraska and he plays college baseball there. Something I really enjoy is watching him play sports. He's always done that from the time he's been little. Um, I've watched him play baseball and football and basketball. I've always enjoyed watching him play sports. So that's a stress reliever. Um, watching him um, compete and, and do the things that he enjoys. I, I like that. That's something I enjoy. It, it relaxes me. I like to go for walks. I like to read. I like to sit outside when it's nice. You guys can think about something that you enjoy. You know, something that makes you feel less stressed out. So think about that and think about what could bring you some joy. It doesn't have to be going on a vacation to the Bahamas, which would be nice if, if, if we could do that often, but just something each day that could just reduce your stress level a little bit. For some people, it's just walking over to Starbucks and buying a drink or sitting outside and, and again, taking in the nice weather like today, or maybe going for a drive and, and putting down your window so you can feel some sun and, and breeze on your face. Um, so you can think about, again, what, what can relieve stress for you. So a few things I would tell you is um, thinking about in your own life, you might be going through some really stressful things right now, but think of some things in your life that you can feel grateful for. So one thing I'm grateful for is the ability to talk to, to all of you um, have that opportunity to visit with you and share some things that might make your life a little bit better. Before this presentation, I went to a yoga session. It was on the lawn over by Custer. And that's one of the things that we're doing as a stress reliever for Fort Hayes students. There was probably nine or 10 people there. And I really enjoyed that opportunity to be with some Fort Hayes students and uh, just kind of taking in the nature and and enjoying that opportunity. So that's something I was grateful for today. So think of some things in your world, even if it's really stressful, something that you're grateful for. That could be how you were treated today by someone, maybe someone was kind to you, but just something you feel some gratitude for. Related to managing your stress, I would really encourage you guys to think about how you manage your time. Through COVID and with your schedules being, um, not necessarily erratic, but not what they typically are um, for your college schedules. I think right now, carrying a planner is more important than ever. You wanna write down what to do. You wanna write down when you need to attend a Zoom session versus um, looking at something online or not attending class that day and taking care of an assignment outside of class. This semester more than ever, you want to manage your time. So some things that are time wasters can be too much time on your phone. Uh, social media is a good thing, but it can also be a harmful thing if you spend too much time on there. So thinking about how you manage your time, what you're doing with your time, I think it's very important to spend time with your friends. That's important. So you wanna have some safe time to spend time with friends. 
You wanna have time to exercise and take care of yourself. You wanna have time for your classes. Um, so you wanna really look at making sure that you're on top of your time management. So being organized and that really, I write everything down in a planner. I still uh, keep track of my time in a planner. Uh, being structured, you know, I can fit in things and that I enjoy doing, but I also fit in what I need to get accomplished. I think it's important to have short-term goals, so that could be what you're going to do today and what you're going to need to do this week, and then set some long-term goals. But don't get so far ahead that you're feeling a lot of anxiety. So it's good to think about, again, what do I need to accomplish today? Um, what's something I need to accomplish this week? And then what are some goals I have for this semester? Like meet with my advisor, figure out if I'm really liking my major. Um, just thinking about what you need to do as a college student to just think about, again, goals for this semester. Um, and you can think about when, you, when you'd like to graduate. But I always tell people, don't get so caught up in, I gotta get these things accomplished that you just feel a lot of anxiety. You have plenty of time um, to worry about working um, throughout your life and all that kind of stuff. So enjoy your college experience. One of the best ways to do that is focus more on the present, focus more on, again, short-term, um, long-term goals for the semester, but not trying to get so far ahead of yourself where you feel a lot of anxiety. So this visual is, is kind of a good reminder. Don't have all kinds of energy drinks and everything just to keep yourself awake and that because that makes your sleep schedule um, very compromised and so again try to manage your time so that you don't create emergencies in your schedule and then just if i'll just a few other things i want to throw out there to you guys so relaxation trying to relax your mind relax your body if you're feeling stress so some of those things are just to pay attention to your breathing. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, sometimes when you're really stressed out, you don't even pay attention to your breathing and you're just always you know, kind of feeling that racy feeling in your heart and you just, again, feel very stressed out. So again, um, breathing, just relaxing and breathing. You know, setting outside, taking in some fresh air and just, again, taking slower breaths to, to calm yourself down. Some relaxation where you tense different areas of your body and then just relax yourself. You can start with your feet and move up your body. Again, just it's, it's just a breathing exercise where you have some music on. And we have some handouts on our website under the self-help and screenings part of the Kelly Center. Can, and there's some really helpful handouts and hopefully I'll be able to show that to you if I can get, my, um, if I can get that figured out with sharing the screen. Um, some meditation, listening to relaxing music, that can be really helpful. Um, and then seeing this as a priority, choosing what's helpful to you and scheduling it in. And don't move it off of your schedule because you think, oh, I don't have time to relax. This is important um, to find time to relax. It doesn't have to be an hour, it could be 10 minutes. Um, but figuring out a way that you can just take some time to just breathe and relax. A few other things. Uh, think about your support system, identifying people who are supportive of you. That could be a family member, that could be a friend, extended family, a grandparent, a neighbor that you consider like family, uh, different groups that you're a part of here at Fort Hayes. Maybe you've got some people in a group that you're a part of, like the Honor Society you're a part of, that or somebody that can really offer some support to you. Or like somebody that you work with that you really feel like cares for you, that would listen to you if you were struggling with something. So identifying your support system and relying on those people. Another important thing is exercise. You don't have to buy an expensive gym membership. You could work out here at Fort Hayes um, for free. It's part of your tuition um, to be able to work out at Fort Hayes. You can go for walks outside. Any form of exercise. Again, it doesn't have to be two hours. It could be 20 minutes, it could be 10 minutes. And again, uh, figuring out when you can put it in your day and scheduling it in, making it a priority. When people come and work with me in counseling and if they have anxiety or depression, or if they're having trouble sleeping, I always talk to them about 
fitting in some exercise. That does wonders for your mood. It does wonders for your stress level. You can sleep better if you exercise. So that's something that's very important. So figuring out what would work for you um, to just fit in some, some form of exercise each day. Another thing is just pay attention to your thought patterns. Pay attention to what you say to yourself. Do you make self-defeating comments? Do you get to have an irrational thoughts, irrational beliefs? And if you're doing a lot of negative thinking or someone around you is really negative, that can be really harmful to your performance. Um, each day you're in your daily roles and activities. So uh, what you feed yourself is oftentimes what you believe. So again, if you're going to take a test and you think, oh gosh, I'm going to do terrible on this test. I didn't study enough. It's going to be awful. You probably aren't going to do as well if you've already talked yourself out of it. So again, you prepare for exams, you relax yourself, and you, you tell yourself, I'm going to do well. I'm going to, I'm going to think hard. I'm going to be prepared and I'm going to do a good job on this. And again, you don't go in there with just all these negative thoughts or many times you can talk yourself out of success. So again, one negative thought can lead to another, then another and another. And um, pretty soon that leads to somebody feeling very anxious and feeling defeated. So instead, um, you change your thought patterns around. And this is not being like overly, um, optimistic where you're not being realistic. This is just being encouraging of yourself and not being so negative and looking for kind of that um, cup half empty versus um, half full where you're trying to find a positive in the situation and trying to, again, encourage yourself and be encouraging of others. This was just a cute little face I thought I'd share with you that somebody had in, the, in um, this slide that they had given a presentation earlier. Uh, what a cute little puppy. That definitely will increase your mood. <clears throat> Sometimes even sp spending time with a pet. I've had some students say when they're really stressed out, they go out to the Humane Society and, and pet an animal. I know some students while they're here, they miss their family pet from home. And so uh, sometimes even again, seeing a pet and and um, being able to hang out a little bit and walking a dog or, or petting a cat or whatever just makes you feel better. A couple last things here. Um, <clears throat> with your eating habits, everybody um, has different eating habits. Um, some people follow like low carb or some people like um, intermittent fasting if maybe that's the way they find is most helpful or healthy for them. But I definitely encourage you to pay attention to your eating patterns. <clears throat> Make sure that you are taking care of yourself, that you eat and that you eat, eat properly for your body, you fuel your body. I know that eating healthier can be expensive at times, um, but definitely there are ways to look up healthy recipes, you know, eating healthy on a limited um, income. Uh, going to our food um, bank that we have here on campus. If you struggle financially um, with food, we have um, we have food available at the library that you can go in. And, and um, uh, Bob Duffy, who works at the Kelly Center, is ahead of the um, Hunger and Food Initiatives. And so we have the food exchange that's in the library that students can get. Um, so definitely checking into resources. Um, one of the things that they often say is to cut down on sugar and caffeine, processed foods, but making sure you're getting adequate water and nutrition to fuel your body. For some college students, they run into trouble with being anemic. And so I always encourage college students to pay attention to taking a, a vitamin. You don't have to take an expensive vitamin, but just take a daily vitamin. That can be really beneficial to your health. Uh, the last couple of areas here is thinking about having your own stress first aid kit. And so this could be something that you maybe carry around with you, put it in your book bag or have something with you. For some students, they maybe they like the smell of essential oils. I don't know if any of you guys like something like that, but I have a little um, essential oil that actually I have in my office right now, um, just a little it's just like a little bottle of uh, oil that you can put into a diffuser 
or you could uh, put a little bit on your arm and you smell it throughout the day. Um, some people just go out to Walmart or Walgreens or go to uh, back to nature and just get like an essential oil that you could carry around in your book bag that you could smell. It's just a relaxing smell. Maybe for some of you guys, uh, chewing gum or eating a piece of chocolate or uh, whatever it is, it just relaxes you a little bit. Just something that will, if your heart's racing, you just feel some stress, you could just calm down. Uh, I talk to students about this technique where you can just touch each of your fingers while you're sitting in class. Um, as you touch one finger, you think of some place you've gone that's really relaxing with your family or with a friend. Maybe you got like to go to the lake or you've gone to a beach somewhere, or you've gone to the mountain, mountains and you enjoy that. And then you touch your next finger and think of something that's very comforting, something that's really, um, that you care about, that's very good to you and think about that person. Um, you just go from, uh, and just think of just some people that make you feel good, experiences that make you feel good, things that make you feel relaxed. Again, maybe your family pet. And nobody knows what you're doing in the classroom, but you're just getting your mind from racing where you're overthinking, getting yourself really stressed out to calming yourself down. Many times if you get more present and this, this is a way to kind of calm yourself down and ground yourself, that could be a way to get yourself out of anxiety that you might be feeling. Because a lot of people who have anxiety experience panic attacks. So that's one way to not experience panic attacks or to calm it down if it starts happening. So think about what might be something that could help you. And then just uh, lastly, this slide is uh, people just, again, jumping up in the air and just finding some things to be joyful about. So hopefully some of these things that I've, I've talked about with all of you will be of benefit, something that you could go back in um, and, and look at or maybe remind yourself it's just a way of to, taking care of yourself by managing your stress, uh, managing your time, and recognizing that through COVID, people are having a lot of different emotions of, uh, and expressions of emotions. People are dealing with grief because of the change and struggles. And, and some of that is just completely normal. Um, but again, if you're struggling and you feel like it would benefit you to come and talk with one of us at the Kelly Center, we'd be more than happy to talk to you. So do any of you guys have any questions for me um, at all from this presentation? I personally don't. Do not. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you want me to try to show you uh, real quick the, the two handouts I wanted to tell you about with the taking an exam with test anxiety? Would that be okay? Yes, of course. I think she said that would be great. Okay. I had a question real quick. Um, so you said the Kelly Center in March was um, kind of a telehealth only sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Are you still encouraging that method? Is um, in person a possibility? In person is a possibility. We always ask people to make sure that they're feeling healthy and uh, before they come in here. So we do have some students coming in um, to do in person sessions. And then we have uh, some people still continuing to do um, Zoom. So yes, that's a possibility if you would rather do in person. Okay, so here's that. Can you guys see this sheet on how to take an exam? Okay, so this handout is under the self-help and screenings section of our website. And I know you guys wanted to hear a little bit about taking an exam and, and managing test anxiety. So this handout I think is really a good handout to look at making sure again that you take care of yourself, getting a good night's sleep. I've always told students, if you wanna decide if you wanna stay up all night long to study, or go to bed and get a good night's sleep to take a multiple choice test, you'd be better off reviewing your notes, getting a good night's sleep. You're gonna do better on a multiple choice exam because your brain, you're gonna be able to think better to be able to tell the difference between two close answers. 
So get enough rest, eat breakfast. Uh, if you're studying, get up and take breaks from studying. I think that's important. Don't always study a study guide from this, like start at the top. Sometimes start in the middle, sometimes start at the end, the bottom of your study guide. So you're, when you start to study, you're rested when you start in the different areas of your study guide. Some people always start at the top and it's better to start in different places because as you study, you get tired and get distracted. So start in different places on your study guide. If somebody's really stressed out and they stress you out and you're trying to get ready for an exam, it's okay to um, not talk to that person excessively on the phone if you need to take a break from that particular person. Because sometimes people, when you talk to them, it elevates your stress level. So it's okay to set boundaries and let that person know, hey, I'm trying to get ready for an exam. Can I call you after I'm done studying and, and after I've taken the exam? And that's a healthy boundary that you set for yourself. It gives some ideas about breathing and taking care of yourself when you sit down to take an exam and to just, again, take some deep breaths, calm yourself down. Uh, many times you can just kind of blow out breaths um, to get your heart rate slowed down. Uh, again, having gum in the room with you to choose some gum. Um, if you feel like your heart's really racing uh, fast, many times coughing, you know, just uh, coughing can kind of slow down um, that feeling in your heart if you feel like it's really racing. This handout gives some ideas about writing down uh, some ideas on a test if you can write. Um, if you're able to, to uh, take some notes as you're uh, taking an exam online, I know that you have rules if you're taking um, exams online. So you'd have to talk to your professor about your ability to take some notes as you're going or, or a piece of scrap paper as you're taking an exam. This part of the handout, if you start to panic during an exam, so this would fit into that test anxiety. Pause for a few moments, put your pencil down and just kind of sit back and relax a minute. Slow down your breathing. Reassure yourself that everything's okay in your mind. Again, you're just kind of getting yourself calmed down. Again, you could use that technique I told you about with your hands just to think of things that are relaxing that you can calm yourself a little bit. No matter how bad anxiety feels, uh, don't have that feeling of, you know, try to avoid that feeling of just wanting to run out of the room. Again, calm yourself down. Anxiety is not going to hurt you in that moment. Very few people ever, I mean, it's a rarity. I've done counseling for 28 years. It is a rarity that you ever pass out from anxiety. It feels unpleasant but it's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna make you, again, pass out. And that's a, that's a rarity for that to happen. So again, just calm yourself as much as possible. Reassure yourself that you're gonna be okay. And again, a lot of that prep that you need to do before an exam is to you know, go for a walk, and make sure that you have done some things to relax yourself before you ever walk into an exam. You don't wanna walk in there stressed out or walk in there or telling yourself a lot of negative thoughts or talking to people that stress you out or getting there at the last minute. I always tell students, don't rush yourself into an exam. So let's say you need to take an exam before Sunday night. I always encourage people, don't take the exam at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. on Sunday night because what if you have internet problems? Or you know, what if something goes wrong? I think it's better to take the exam earlier so that you don't have extra stress if something would go wrong with, with your internet. And those kinds of things can go wrong. Like if you're working on with lockdown browser or something like that, you can have those stressors. So I, I tell students don't create a situation where you might have a panic happen. And you never know if you might get a phone call that would be really upsetting to you if you're planning to take an exam at a certain time. So it's better to be as prepared as possible, set boundaries with other people that maybe stress you out or, again, want to distract you. Because being successful in college, that's your number one priority right now. And let's say one of you have a job somewhere outside of Fort Hayes 
it's important to have a job and earn money so that you can get the things that you need. Uh, but your number one priority is to be a, st a student. And so hopefully if any of you guys struggle with balancing time, like you feel like you volunteer too much or you work too much, you're trying to help your family out too much, that might be a reason to come see one of us to help you to figure out some reasonable boundaries and limits. Because I know from, for, for you guys in, in an honor society, oftentimes you're students who excel and you, you have a hard time maybe saying no to other people because you wanna volunteer, you wanna do all kinds of different activities. And sometimes you can spread yourself too thin. And, and that's where you might start to feel too anxious and, and get too overwhelmed. So if you're starting to feel some test anxiety, many, time that's, many times that's related to performance. And again, what you tell yourself, but you definitely wanna maintain a, an optimal stress level at all times, not just days of exams, because stress can have a cumulative effect on you. And it may seem it comes out at times where you're taking an exam, but many times you, your stress level is probably too high on a day, day in and day out basis. So again, we have handouts that you could look at and hopefully uh, some items on our, on our website. And I'll show you that real quick too before we wrap up where you guys can look at that and see some of the options. Um, but lastly on this handout, the other thing I wanted to, to mention this last item try to avoid an exam post-mortem. And what this means is like meeting up with classmates afterwards and saying, oh, I think I failed that test, it was awful. I'm sure I just messed up on this and that. And, and you know, then calling your mom and telling her all about it and telling somebody else how awful it was. Allow yourself a certain amount of time to, to talk about it, but then move on from it and recognize, okay, I just need to contact the professor. I need to get a game plan. I need to get a tutor. I need to, study differently next time around. I need to be less distracted. I need to work on my sleep patterns. Get a plan rather than just, again, just feeding all that anxiety about that particular exam performance. So those are a few things um, on that that may be helpful to you. So I'm gonna stop, sh stop sharing that. And then the last thing I wanna show you guys is our website. And there may have been an easier way to do this, but I am not the best with technology. So uh, COVID has stretched my uh, capacities here with some of this technology. Uh, I definitely am, am uh, someone who likes to get up in front of a group of people and talk versus do all this technology stuff. So, okay, so this is our website. If you type in Kelly Center on uh, the search on Fort Hayes's website and you go to the Kelly Center and then if you go to self-help and screenings, this particular area will sh show a lot about some options we have for you this semester. So first off, I'm gonna show you, there's a number of articles you could go to. Uh, this article I did, I showed you guys a little bit ago, how to take an exam. So you can click on that and just look at what I just went over with you. There's, if you wanna learn a little bit more about anger management or effective communication, if you have some issues with a roommate, concentration, relaxation techniques, if some of you are struggling with self-esteem, there's just some areas that you can look at. We have this Discovering Wellness series. So we have, uh, and I'll show you some of the groups that we have going on. We have some special videos like Calming Anxiety. You could click on any of these links and watch videos, Healthy Sleep Habits, managing your social media and online time, managing stress and challenging times, again, related to COVID. A lot of people have what, we're, what we call COVID fatigue, where you're just over COVID. I think all of us are feeling that way at this point. Uh, study habits for success, ways to manage stress. And then we have some ongoing groups and I'll show you those as options this semester. So 
you can call the Kelly Center and find out about different groups you can be a part of. There's a few that we have listed on here. These are some educational Zoom sessions, and it tells you all the different topics that are covered if you're interested in any of these. We have a Mindfulness Monday, and it tells you the time that you can be a part of it. I mentioned the yoga on the lawn that I participated in earlier today. Uh, this mindfulness group that meets uh, the last Wednesday of the month. The group the very first group that was mentioned, I want to make sure and point out what this one is. This Discover Wellness and this Kelly Center Connections Stronger Together, what those two are, they are led by one of our counselors and one of our interns. Those topics are dependent upon who all zooms in that day. So I have understood from the people leading these groups that one week they might talk about how to manage anxiety. One week they might talk about how to stay motivated. One week they talk about maybe relationships and how to deal with stressful relationships. Uh, dating always seems to be challenging at times. So managing dating relationships. So they're basically picking topics that seem real relevant to whoever's zooming in that day to just talk through. So it's not like a group where you have to feel like you have to share something if you don't want to. So you don't have to share. Again, you could just be quiet if you want to and just listen to what other people are sharing. Or it's a time for you to, if you want to say, hey, I'd like to just learn a little bit more about how to manage this or that. And you could share whatever's comfortable to you. The, the group leaders are going to talk to anybody that zooms in about the importance of whatever's talked about in that group to keep it private within that group setting. So you don't have to worry if you do share something like if you say, well, I'm really stressed out about this class. You don't have to worry about people going and repeating everything that was said. So they're going to really emphasize the importance of if somebody would share something about something they feel particularly stressed about that people wouldn't go out and repeat what's being talked about in those groups. However, if you don't feel comfortable sharing in a group setting like that, you have the opportunity to meet with a personal counselor and all of those personal counseling sessions are free and they are all confidential. So you could meet with someone like me um, or some other counselor here and we'd be happy to talk to you about whatever uh, you'd like to visit about. So if you see on the side here of this, uh, this share, you'll see that we have a number of services with personal counseling, tutoring, again, our time management, talking about, again, test anxiety, alcohol and drug counseling, if you need any accommodations at all that might be of help to you, and then we have different types of testing services. So that's some of the different services we have here at the Kelly Center. Okay, any questions from any of you about any of those services or anything that I've shared tonight? I don't have any questions. No, thank you. Okay, well, hopefully what I shared was helpful to you. I hope this is what you had in mind. And I hope this is, um, will be beneficial to people. Again, if you share this link, um, hope, hopefully there'll be a resource here that they might, might find helpful and certainly feel free to reach out to me if there's anything I need to clarify or if you'd like me to talk about something else in the future. Thank you so much for presenting. I know all of us appreciate it so much and I learned a lot of things that I, that I didn't know that were out there. So truly, truly appreciate it. Good. Well, thank you. I appreciate being able to join you guys.